Welcome everyone. I'm Amal Andraus. I'm the Dean of the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation. I'm very excited to be speaking with you today to share with you what we're doing at the school. It's a really both challenging time, but also incredibly exciting in terms of the thinking and the transformations and the sort of really pushing the disciplines and the practices of the built environment. So today I will take you through very broadly the themes and the kind of work and the student life that happens at the school that is happening now that happened in the past and that I'm hopeful will happen again next year with many of you um, with us. And so I'll be sharing a presentation so that you can get a glimpse into the school, even though you're not uh, with us physically um, this fall. This is Avery Hall. I think that as architects uh, and planners and preservationists and critics and curators and urban designers and real estate developers, and we really kind of are attached to our building. Uh, it's a very iconic uh, McKim Mead and White um, building. And a lot of it is about bringing all of these disciplines together on a beautiful campus, the Columbia University campus in the heart uh, of New York City. And so the sense of kind of um, different people coming together from around the world in this incredible neighborhood is really kind of embodied um, by both the old and the new, which this building in its context represents. Uh, the school is very much about what I call the scales of engagement, how we engage with the issues of our time uh, through the different disciplines at different scales. In the scale of preservation is the scale of the material, it's the scale of, uh, sort of a kind of much more uh, uh, sort of precise scale in terms of technology uh, and social engagement, the scale of architecture, the scale of building, the scale of urban design and planning is much more uh, at the urban and regional scale, etc. And how all these systems come together is what we try to kind of look at at the school. And of course, these lines of inquiry are infinite uh, and our students take them in so many different directions. But I would say that the three main themes that I think run through all of the programs is the focus on climate and climate change and what we can do today to address um, climate through the built environment, questions of equity, um, social and racial equity, very visible through the built environment as we saw and we continue to see with the COVID crisis, uh, the intersection of, of health, of issues of race, of issues of socioeconomic um, access, all of these things are embedded with what we design and how we design. And data and design, we understand the technology as I'm speaking to you today is shaping everything. Uh, it's reshaping space, it's drawing, making connections between people, but also creating barriers. And so how we undo these barriers and emphasize the connections through data and design in the built environment is very crucial to all of our programs. On the issue of climate, um, if you go to our website, you can see on you know both all three themes. You can see um, the extensive work that's been done over the years, and that continues to be done, as I said, across the program. Whether it's historic preservation and thinking about the future of many of our iconic cities that are uh, under distress, uh, whether it's real estate development, very engaged uh, in shaping the future of the built environment and bringing issues of social equity, racial equity, and climate resilience adaptability and, um, and the idea of private and public development coming together. Urban design is very much dedicated to climate change and I know many of you will hear from the director Kate Orff and this has been a running, running thread um, because the program is really embedded in this kind of systems, infrastructural uh, thinking, water systems and other that are central to, uh, to the to the program and finally architecture uh, as well, whether it's a kind of very large scale uh, understanding of issues of migration and how it uh, is impacting cities and, and, and intersecting with climate change. Um, and as well, I think what's great about having these running themes is that programs come together. I mean, we have a lot of dual degree students and at the intersection of preservation or planning, at the intersection of planning and architecture, 
uh, or preservation and architecture, real estate and architecture, etc. These themes are really organizing much of the of the research. Um, so I showed a lot of uh, sort of images about the kind of large scale interventions, but we're also looking at the material scale questions of embodied energy. This is uh, David Benjamin's research for the new uh, Museum of Modern Art, really literally seeing uh, the calculating and making visible the embodied energy of constructing that project. And so this kind of research and thinking uh, extends through the work of our students, um, very creative, very experimental ways. You know, at what, at what scale do you decide that you want to impact the environment? Is it at the scale of the body? Is it at the scale of systems, at the scale of buildings, etc.? At every scale, these ideas are existing and, and nested and get tied very much to the research centers that we have um, at the school, the Center for Resilient Cities and Landscapes, um, the Buell Center, uh, or the Center for Spatial Research, amongst uh, many other. So here I'm showing just work of the students. This is advanced um, studio under Andres Harki. This is uh, last year we had um, the Public Works for a Green New Deal collaborating across many studios to look at the question of the public uh, of the Green New Deal, um, working with the Buell Center in collaboration with the school. Um, so it's kind of coming all together and bringing the labs as well, such as uh, Malo Hudson's Circular Cities workshop uh, uh, that he did with his uh, health and equity um, lab. And the student transform all these ideas in a very creative way, uh, kind of creating a sense of both continuity and change as we rethink both um, history, but also imagine a different future. Um, the question of equity, as I mentioned, is also very central to um, all of our programs uh, and how we think about equity, how we think about social justice and racial justice in the built environment is increasingly, uh, I think, central to, to the school. Uh, of course, a, a program such as urban planning is really um, um, sort of embedded in issues of social justice and that has expanded out um, to all of the program, especially as I mentioned with the COVID crisis, looking at the connections between social racial justice and the built environment and kind of using our tools as architects and planners to make those relationships visible through mapping, um, through kind of questioning uh, preservation and how preservation approaches and um, these issues of social justice through critical curatorial practices and uh, making visible um, the kind of segregation and discriminatory practice, practices that exist um, in our, uh, in, you know, in the ways that we work and also kind of being um, sort of enlisting new modes of representation, undoing the typical ways that we think about architecture, bringing performance in to kind of undo these, these boundaries. This was a fantastic uh, presentation by Mario Gooden um, last year at the school um, and continuing with issues of representation, you know, questioning ideas about um, 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 typologies that are not specifically Western, such as the mosque and the ways they've been represented um, throughout um, um, typically in architecture education. So really questioning the boundaries um, of the discipline through uh, uh, kind of opening up what is represented, who is represented, how is it represented, and how we can undo some of these ideas. The issue of um, equity is also central to uh, the project of housing which is in itself central to the school. We have unbelievable expertise amongst our faculty who have looked at the history of, of housing both in the United States and elsewhere. Uh, we've launched two years ago the Housing Lab um, that is very much a kind of student uh, run and is kind of coming up with new ideas to intervene in public housing uh, and is engaging now the alumni network, et cetera, to really bring, uh, expand uh, on the work of housing at the school and connect um, our students to what is happening outside of the school. And we also have amazing faculty that are really practicing what we teach in terms of addressing affordable housing and new modes of housing, modular housing, etc. whether it's in Barcelona or in Johannesburg, in Mexico City or in New York City. So this kind of incredible expertise um, is really something that is central to the school and the 
the, it, the housing cuts across all of the programs and is certainly central to the MR program in terms of the seminal housing studio, which is the third semester studio, which uh, has in the past often traveled either um, uh, in, in the US or, or elsewhere to think relationally and compare uh, contexts and places and understand what is you know, what are kind of normalized ideas about density or how we live and question those or how we build. Um, so these kind of relational thinking uh, and thinking about housing, not just in a European or American setting, but across different cities, across different neighborhoods within those cities really kind of brings a new perspective to how we think of housing um, for the future. And finally, as I mentioned, data and design. Uh, I think the school is really leading in terms of new representational technologies, drawing technologies. This is still part of its history in terms of the kind of ideas of the paperless studio. And right now, obviously, we're definitely um, paperless. But more than that, I think it's not just about drawing or how we draw, but what we draw and what are the new relationships that we make visible uh, to understand the built environment in new ways to allow us to act on it as architects, as planners, as developers, as preservationists, and find ways to intervene. And this is the work of the uh, Center for Spatial Research led by Laura Kurgan. And this, this is, of course, tying, uh, not, you know, moving beyond what is virtual and what is analog, what is physical and what is digital and coming together to make things uh, and tie the two together and bring the two, uh, the kind of physical and the digital um, together to, again, make visible and, you know, how uh, our built environment operates now and how we can intervene more precisely within what is not always visible. And the visual studies um, sequence in particular, for example, in the architecture um, programs is incredibly rich in different perspectives. And now is really cutting across to planning, et cetera, to bring these tools and this understanding um, across all of the programs we have just um, launched this summer the GSAP skill trails, which is open to all of you. You can access. It's about making uh, available and accessible publicly um, um, sort of tools and knowledge about scripting and new kinds of software, etc. And you can you can definitely access it. Um, and this is some of the work that I wanted to show from our students from the spring, um, which is how we take the tools that we have, um, but then move much further in reinventing them uh, to come together and create a sense of community and collective um, collectivity. We have uh, also in terms of the technology sequence uh, in architecture, um, our new uh, full-time professor Lola Benalon is doing incredible work on uh, eco-friendly materials, embodied energy, and working closely both with the preservation program and planning, you know, to bring all of these things together, reshaping, as I said, notions of energy, climate, through um, data and design and technology together. And this is some of the work, for example, of the building technology sequence of historic preservation where technology is just you know, incredible right now to understand buildings. Um, this is the playfulness and sense of openness we engage with as reviews are you know, happening and uh, whether they are remote or, or in person. Um, and, um, and just kind of, again, bringing all these ideas of climate equity um, and and data and design to make it make all of these relationships visible for us to intervene uh, in new ways, both uh, digitally and in the in the in the city itself. This is just um, some images of our making studio and uh, what I love about our making studio and making at the school is that it's very much um, collaborative and increasingly more and more programs are engaging with um, you know the kind of empowerment that you get from making things and feeling like you can uh, transform the built environment uh, and experiment in both a playful and responsible way. So all of these ideas that kind of we put forth um, are really for you as students to take positions 
uh, to define your position in architecture and in planning and real estate and preservation and to empower you to uh, kind of find ways to act in the world towards a more creative and more sustainable and more equitable future when it comes to the cities and the built environment around us. Um, it's a very, uh, I think, I, I think of the school as a really a place where people discuss issues and come together and debate them. There's a sense of um, openness. And if you would like, you can still see all of the work um, at the end of year show that is still posted. Uh, it was the first end of year show that went completely digital um, in the spring. And it just was an incredible way to kind of cut across all of the programs and see um, the work of the students as they assembled their ideas after three semesters, two years, three years into portfolios, into thesis, and into really kind of positions. And so some of the work that I'm showing here cuts across architecture, urban design, um, um, CCCP in terms of a kind of uh, thesis um, um, or a thesis in urban planning and all of this is Kind of visible for you to see and I think it speaks for itself in terms of the incredible quality um, and, and of thinking of making of imagination that the students put forth at the end um, of their time with us. And this time is fun, it's uh, energizing, it's uh, empowering, it's uh, and even in this moment of kind of remote learning uh, there's a lot of experimentation and how um, we are kind of connecting who is there and who is, I mean, everybody's there, but who is physically together and who is, who is uh, not. And I do believe that while I'm very hopeful the next fall, we will you know, be together again, all together. Um, I think a lot of the experiments that are occurring now in terms of connecting um, um, globally, different people around the world or, or, or cutting down on travel, I think some of these ideas will stay there to enrich the, the experience. And we certainly have retrofitted um, the entire school to be able to do that. And I think that will definitely, maybe this will not stay, <laughs> social distancing, I hope, the physical distancing, but, but certainly the kind of work we've done with the technology uh, will sort of enable the sense of connection and we will continue to feel very connected to the city we are in, which is um, New York. And, you know, it's just a incredible uh, laboratory of um, ideas of people of experiments over time, historically in the present, some which are great, some which we need to learn from to, to do uh, in a different way. And so New York is really part Part of the school itself and and one of the reasons uh, why I think so many people are attracted to coming uh, uh, whether faculty or students and um, this is just kind of sharing with you what's happening right now I know some of you will attend the uh, midterm reviews which I meant very much encourage you to attend and we've created these virtual studios and a way for students to connect uh, right now and I'm really looking forward for you to connect with our own students our events um, and public events and programming and, and exhibitions are very much uh, always capturing and advancing ideas about the disciplines. This semester we are completely dedicated to the question of unlearning whiteness and the question of um, um, racial equity in the built environment. Incredible perspectives coming together to find ways to engage these issues uh, in, a, in a really creative way um, uh, with a broad range of architects and designers and planners from, from around the world. And moving, you know, the discipline forward through publication. Um, these are some of the upcoming um, books, um, both, um, you know, cutting through design, cutting through theory, cutting through um, scholarship. Um, and, uh, and here you can see a little bit how we continue to create a sense of uh, community um, through our communication at this time. Uh, and communicating through events, et cetera. And so I think a lot of what is being done now will stay in terms of overlapping the digital and the physical and enhancing um, the experience of being together both um, in the buildings, um, but also um, um, virtually as well. These are some of our spaces, which you would have been able to visit uh, had you been able to, to come. 
Uh, we try to take over all of our spaces for student work, for exhibition. This is the Ross Gallery. We've had fantastic exhibitions such as um, that of Cooking Sections or Turquoise Dyson, who produced uh, sort of original work um, um, on uh, uh, called 1919 Black Water. Um, and you can see on the website more information about it. And we really also have a great um, student culture in terms of our student group, student um, engagement, uh, thinking about practice for the future, how we construct new forms of practice to engage, um, what are different career trajectories and uh, how the school can support both um, these ideas and, and more tangibly what happens uh, after students uh, students uh, graduate, um, great student, very active student groups. The Black Student Alliance at GSAP has been extraordinary in pushing um, the school uh, over the past uh, month, and uh, and then at this simultaneously again um, the idea of when you're at the school you're already connected um, with the city and there's so many offices and practices um, around that we uh, we make that connection we have um, offices being visited we have conferences that are happening outside of the school itself. We collaborate with institutions with uh, such as uh, MoMA or the Queens Museum or the Storefront for Art and Architecture or um, uh, of course the AIA in New York, etc. cetera, um, NOMA and others uh, to really kind of build those institutional bridges and uh, allow for the students while they're at school and afterwards to be part of changing um, the culture of architecture. These are our new presidents, co-presidents um, co for the alumni board, and we've been increasing the ties uh, amongst the alumni and between the students uh, and, the, and the alumni all summer. Uh, and continuing um, this semester, there are conversations between alumni and current students, again, to, to think about, uh, you know, what, 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 what do students, what is available when you graduate and how do you continue to dive into um, the issues that are interesting to you while you're at school. Another mode of um, support has been and continues to be the GSAP incubator which is now a prize that enables recent graduates to really explore questions of practice um, um, in, in, in new ways and push the boundaries. And uh, again, you can look online for some of these podcasts and conversations to see what some of our uh, incubator alumni have done over the past um, years. Hopefully, um, when we're back all together, um, we'll still be able not just to explore virtually, but to kind of engage experientially and uh, continue to uh, learn from uh, different places and contexts and sites and um, be there to understand how we can be better citizens of the planet and how do we live together in, uh, in a kind of more uh, sustainable, equitable, and creative way. So that's it for um, today as the open house. Uh, and I know you will hear more from the various program directors. It's a very um, exciting, energized, and uh, sort of empowering moment uh, at the school. And there's many, many questions uh, that I think the built environment and architecture are central to, and we are really shaping the next generation um, of, of sort of engaged practitioners. Thank you, everyone, and hope to see you soon.